Hey guys, Rob Stellini, your content manager here, and um, it's Thursday. Um, I was out this morning, and I came home and was thinking what to do, got some work to do, and I realised, shit, it's Thursday. Um, so you nearly missed it today, but uh, I'm committed to getting it done. It's 2.20 now, so hopefully we can have it out by 5. I don't see any reason why we shouldn't, but today we move on to R, comes after Q, and a massive thanks to P -P MMC Pimmy excuse me, um, for suggesting reliability and responses, as in replying to other people's questions and stuff, smiley face. Big shout out to you, because you got seven likes, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So, um, before I kick off with that, I'm trying to tell you a little bit about what the design you're looking at. This is another identity uh, design, just a logo this time, um, for a server company called Vanilla Melt. They came to me about um, getting... Some ice, some a melting ice cream with the words vanilla melt. Um, they suggested maybe having the ice cream up uh, like as just a cone. And I said, "Want well, want to have it upside down, like melting, as if like someone's dropped it." Um, and this is what I came up with. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, check them out. I think you can find them on Google. Uh, I don't have a specific link for them yet, but great guys to work with. So check them out. Um, so we'll start with R. Uh, what was the first one? Reliability. Um, I think this is an interesting one uh, because it it affects not just designers. I think uh, looking the first thing I think of when I think of reliability with a with a, a YouTube connotation with a YouTube designer connotation, I think that reliability, as in if I'm your designer, um, there are very few people I'm the designer for. Uh, I hand select them, and if I'm your designer and you you come to me and you ask for something, reliability means that you should be able to t say why you can do it, why you can't do it, being being available to do stuff, but not just like at the drop of a hat. You, It's like plumbers. If you can find a plumber that will work on the same day, find a different plumber. Because the truth is, there's a reason they're not in work. Um, and it's the same with designers. Good designers are in demand, and it's, you, you have to wait a little while to get stuff from them. But reliability just means you're, you always put the, the most into your work, um, and that you're... When you say you're going to do something, you do it. If I say I've taken a deposit of 50% for this project and I'll have it done by Friday, have it done by Friday. In fact, better, have it done by Thursday. Because if you have it done by Thursday, someone will come back to you in the future because you're efficient. So when you're setting a deadline for a project, make sure it's a deadline that you can be reliable to. So if you say, oh, don't worry, I'll have this done in two hours' time and it's a project that's going to take you six hours, there's no point saying you're going to have it done in two hours. It's, it's not worth it because it's too much of a risk that you won't get it done. So, always allow yourself extra time, however efficient you think you can be. If you think you can get a project done in two days, set a deadline for three. Um, don't set a deadline for seven, because that's 350% of the actual time it will take you to do the project. But give yourself a little bit of leeway, let's say, um, in a happy sense, maybe you might make someone go out for a drink, or there's a football game on that you forgot about, or something like that, or um, some something interesting that you've got to do, or worse still, um, you fall and break your arm, or you you feel ill, so you go to bed for a little while. And if you oversleep, you don't get the project done. So allow yourself a little bit of time to be reliable. I think that's what it was important. And actually, in the design world, if your boss says do something, you have to do it. I mean, it it it, it works in every every school of life, whether you're at university, you're studying at college, uh, you're a full time freelance designer, you work for a um, a company, wherever you're doing, in the design world, reliability is always a good trait. Um, so that's time management, making sure you got everything. When you say you're going to do it, do it. Um, yes, yeah, so that's pretty much what I what I deem reliability to mean. I hope that that's what you were looking for as a reliability as a topic, and it's what you hope for as an answer. Um, and we'll move on to responses. Responses is something I really want to talk about. Um, and it's not just for designers. This is this is a specifically a YouTube thing. Um, I think the truth is the chances of you, if you if you're working in a professional environment with a designer, so you're not a designer, you've employed a designer. The response is is a pretty standard thing. You're going to have to discuss your design work with them. Um, so I'm not going to look at this from a professional standpoint, but responses in a YouTube sense, I. I've always tried to answer, I answer every message I get. Uh, I know a lot of people say like, they get a lot of messages. I've got nearly 10,500 subscribers. 
right? And that's not a huge amount in the sort of general YouTube sense, but that, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. When I get maybe 50 messages a day, um, the majority of them are asking for backgrounds for free or for paid work, and they want to know my prices and whatnot. So I have a pretty generic response for people looking for what, like my work. Which is, it's not just to check the prices, it's a, it, it's a little message explaining it and says hi and it's it's friendly enough to seem like it's a, a personal message and I'd love to reply to everybody individually but the truth is it's not efficient to do that because everyone's just asking for prices. When someone then replies to me saying yeah I'm interested, then I don't reply with a set thing, I, I question them about what they want and their project and stuff and I tend to add them on Skype. Um, and responses to stuff like a lot of people message me saying that I'm the reason they're on YouTube, um, and that's not me being big-headed. I it always makes me it makes me so happy getting those messages. I had a guy message me on Skype yesterday saying, "You're the reason that I am what I'm doing. Without you, I'd probably be some drop drop kick stone." I think was the way the words he would used. That I'd I'd inspired him to actually do some do something and and get stuck into something he really enjoyed and actually he loves it and he's really good at it. So. Um, I, I love messages like that, and I will always respond to them. If you message me on Skype, on Twitter, Twitter's a difficult one because I do get a lot of tweets through. Um, if I don't reply straight away, maybe message me again or message me through a different form. Um, not the website. The website is for business contact. Please don't ask for prices for backgrounds and stuff on my bu- website. I, just, I don't reply to them. That's the one thing I don't reply to, is messages for YouTube work through my website. Um, that's not how it works. So... Um, yeah, I, th- I think responses are important, and obviously, as I get bigger, I, d- I don't know how big I'll ever get, but even people like, I don't know, if you've got a hundred thousand subscribers, your chances are you get. If I'm getting fifty messages a day with ten k subscribers, just the maths of it, you should be getting five hundred messages plus if you have a hundred k. And if you have a million, five thousand messages a day, I imagine. I don't know what JJ gets or Burnsy gets. Um, I'd be really interested to know actually, but I know that. Their biggest responses and their interaction is on Twitter. It, it's very easy to, in this day and age, contact your heroes. Um, I, for example, I have a massive like Eric. Spe- Eric Speakerman is a graphic design icon of mine. I look up to him. I've been to a few conferences he's curated, um, and he's just an all-round amazing designer, um, speaker, and influence. He's a brilliant role model as a designer. If you've not if you've not heard of Eric Speakerman, go and check him out. Um, and he tweeted the other day about an icon system where you can upload icon, where you you can use web type icons. And I've been using a system for a little while now called Icon Moon that's free. Uh, you can only select the ones that you need. So you have really small file sizes. It's hosted locally. So you don't have to worry about like, you don't have to worry about a server somewhere else being down. It's just your server that does it. And, uh, you can upload your own ones. And so I messaged him and like, I, I tweeted him and almost, I think it was within a, within an hour. He's got 250,000 followers on Twitter, which is a huge amount for a professional designer. It's not like YouTube where it's really easy to get 300,000 uh, followers or something like that. Um, and he retweeted it. And like I got loads of follows and favorites and stuff. And actually, it's so much easier in this day and age to get responses from your idols. Um, and I don't say this lightly, but I, I know that I am an inspiration for some people. And that makes me feel amazing. And if... Me tweeting you back or answering some questions helps you in your path to become something better, maybe better than better than me. That that's all that's all I can possibly like want to do from this. Like uh, to begin with, it was for my own stuff and as like a personal thing. But actually, now that I'm part of Yaosh and um, part of making other people's YouTube careers, it's amazing. I love doing it. Um, I think if I if I weren't with Yaosh, I would have stopped YouTube a long time ago. Um, so I think responses is a big part of why I'm on YouTube, um, and I don't know when I was when I was a budding channel with 500 subscribers or less, maybe 250 subscribers as as a designer. I would love to have had someone that I could have looked up to like this, that spoke and actually that responded. Uh, I don't th- it, because there are so many more of us now. People like Magic, uh, Rated, uh, Skybricks. They're all really easy to get in contact with. We're all. Um, I'm all really personable people. Like I could chat to any of those guys for ages. Um, and I think that's the best thing about Twitter and social networking is that it's much easier now for us to answer questions briefly, uh, but for you to get good answers. So if someone else asks me the same question, you guys can see it anyway. So personal messaging isn't always the best way to get an answer because if it's a question about like 
what were your inspirations? Um, I can give you a really brief 140 character answer. And actually everybody that follows me, all 2,000 of you can get that. So I think it's, I prefer Twitter to messaging. I do answer all my messages. Um, people that ask me if they can ask me a question or they can ask me a whole bunch of questions. I normally say tweet me. Um, and it's not just because it's easy for me, but it's also better for people that want to know the answers as well. Um, so for as long as I possibly can, I'm not ignorant in thinking that I can always answer every single message I get because as I grow, I grow faster and faster and faster. It's an exponential growth. The more people that watch me, the more people that are likely to hear about me and see me. So it's it's always a more rapid rate of growth. So the chance of me being able to answer everything in a year's time, if I'm still doing this, are really slim, but I'm going to do my very best. And actually, I think that there are a lot of designers in our community now that are the reason for a lot more designers joining up and, and being part of this. And um, I think that's really important. I, I want to be able to answer questions and give stuff back and, I don't know, just guess be the reason that other people can be on YouTube. So when you look back on, when you're at 10,000 subscribers, maybe you're watching this with 500 and you answer the two or three messages you get a day. As you grow, try and answer them all. Um, I'm not suggesting you have to answer all the stupid ones. You do get a lot of stupid ones. Uh, but the serious ones, maybe you're looking for help or stuff like that, answer them. Uh, and then when you get to 10K, look back and I, you, you won't remember this video, but if, if you do, think about what I said um, and know that you've done something to help other people. By responding, you're helping other people. So I guess that's R. Um, yeah, uh, I hope I guys, I hope I covered everything you wanted to hear, MMC Pimmy. Um, thank you very much for suggesting reliability and responses. Um, we got a lot of dislikes on the last video, so if you did enjoy this, make sure you like it so that we, even if we do, we'll just dwarf them. I don't know why we got the dislikes. Perhaps people could start leaving feedback, even if it's negative. Uh, I can change it if you guys aren't enjoying it, but I think the majority of you are. So, um, yeah, that was pretty much that. Next week is S. Uh, what do you guys want to see me talk about with S? Uh, I won't give you any inspiration because I like having people suggest what they want. Um, so as always, suggest in the comments and make sure you like each other's comments that you want to see. So if you see someone suggested like Pimmy did, if, he's, if you like his suggestion, then like it so that he can get to the top. And then I'll do... His ones are quite good, so I just picked him. But if there's a couple that are good, then I'll, I'll hand select a few of the best ones. So... I hope you guys enjoyed that. As always, make sure you subscribe to Yash Graphics. You're checking out all the other videos. Uh, I've got a couple of great um, user interface uh, videos coming up in the next few days from Zach Keen. They're brilliant. Uh, so definitely check them out. And uh, have a fantastic week. I'll see you next Thursday. Goodbye.